you, you lead in worship, and you are really moving with the Lord, and you step down to lead in communion, it's two different things. You have to, you have to adjust to him and where he's at. I want to do a, just begin with a song, and then we're going to do communion. I'm doing that this morning. This band-aid on my thumb is messing with me. the elements for communion.
reading out of 1 Corinthians 10, <clears throat> Paul says, I speak as to wise. And if you remember 1 Corinthians 1, what he calls the wisdom of God is the cross. I speak as to wise men. Judge ye what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? Behold, Israel after the flesh. Are they, are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? Now in this I... Declare unto you, I praise you not. Because they're not partaking of the altar. That you come together, not for the better, but for the worse. For, first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. When you come together, therefore, into one place, is this not to eat the Lord's Supper? And I add, not the symbol. Not the symbol, but the feast with God over the Lamb. For in eating, everyone taketh before other his own. And one is hungry, and here you're going to hear what I call false communion. First the bread, and then the wine. For one is hungry, and another is drunken. Comes with what he hungers for, false bread, or false wine, or what fills and satisfies him, being drunk. He's saying, your attitudes are all wrong because you have a false communion. What? Have you not houses to just eat and drink if you're just going to eat and drink? Or despise ye the church of God? And shame them that have not, which... The least is the greatest. The lowest is the highest. The one who loses is the one in God's eyes that gains. What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For, for I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord in the very same night in which he was betrayed, meaning they're so selfish they don't even realize it, but Jesus gave the example that in the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. He took bread representing his body but this is his spirit. And when he had given thanks, when he had given thanks, he gladly broke and gave himself. He broke it. He gladly, he knew that for others he was laying down his life. And he gladly did this. And he broke it and said, <clears throat> take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do. This do. This do. You remember the subject that brought this up? All the problems and divisions and selfishness. This do. In remembrance 
of me in remembrance of my selfless giving for you. After the same manner also he took the cup. <clears throat> and when he had taken of the cup, after he had taken it, he took it first. And then he says, this do. The same manner also he took the cup. And when he had supped, when he had poured out himself first, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do, as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me, for as oft as you eat this bread and drink this cup, not just the symbol, but remember again what initiated the line of this. He's not trying to get him to be spiritual during a, during a ritual. He's trying to get them <clears throat> off their selfish ways and their problems with one another and their superior attitudes and looking down on one another. You do show forth, let's say, as oft as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death till he come. So just a few things that I wrote here. Jesus makes ordinary bread and regular wine into a holy altar. What we can't, not us, but we, they, we, we, the world, what we can't seem to do is take ordinary things and make it holy. We got to be in holy things. He takes something regular and makes it full of Christ crucified. <coughs> makes it into a holy altar where poured out and emptied out wine and broken and ripped apart bread are made most holy because they are altered. My word, altered, not altered like changed, but gone to the altar. Jesus then explains that this death was never meant to be an event done by himself alone so that such a thing would never happen to us. Instead, he presents his death as a feast that others may participate and commune with him in it, the death, not the feast. Too long have we only communed in the symbols of his death and not joined with him in an inward way leading to an outward lifestyle. The elements of ripped apart and devoured bread along with emptied out and consumed wine symbolize not only us feasting with Jesus on what sustains him, but comprehending deeply what it is that we are eating and what it is we are communing with him over. Paul makes it clear that we are assimilating that death with the purpose of showing it forth. For as oft as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death till he come. Has he come? Then our one object is to show forth that death to those around us. The bread and the wine are only examples but he sees problems in the church. And so he, he's presenting us on a completely different basis than just a ritual. He's saying this is, this is the, what Jesus did when he came to the meal. Again, verse 18, Behold Israel after the flesh. Are not they which eat of the sacrifices? My words here are meant to be, his words, partakers of the altar. Father, we ask that you let us not just go through the motions of something that is a ritual, that we not just see the blood was poured out for my sins so that I can be saved but the, 
the purpose and the reason why this was even brought up was because of divisions, because of actions that were so contrary to your son, to Christ crucified. And that you wanted us to have communion all the time. And you wanted us to be your body, broken bread, broken, ripped apart bread, devoured bread for others, just like you did. Just like you did on that night when you left that place and you went to the Garden of Gethsemane and they took you and they tore your flesh. You may take the bread. And Father, we just thank you that your son didn't just teach this. He did it first. After he first, after first he took it, he said, this do. Do it in remembrance of my death and why I did it and what was behind it in my spirit. May we see what you see of Christ crucified. You may take the wine.